And that's become a problem. Uh, when everyone used landlines, they could simply match the call to your billing address and know exactly where you were. But now, you could be anywhere, unless, of course, you have AT&T, because then you can only get reception standing on a chair right by your living room window, <laughs> as long as it's not cloudy. <laughs> and full disclosure here, even our own parent company, Time Warner, is currently trying to merge with AT&T, which makes this story a little dangerous for us to do. Although, you know, that is presuming that AT&T executives managed to get their shitty service working long enough to see it. <laughs> AT&T! It's the top telecom company around, alphabetically, and nothing else. <laughs> and that is infuriating. After all, if I wanted exorbitant fees that keep getting raised all the time, despite shitty service, I'd become a customer of AT&T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, AT&T! Even if you take over, you'll never be my real dad! <laughs> yeah. You could be cut off from high-speed internet, although that could actually be a huge opportunity for the finest purveyors of shitty low-speed internet. I'm talking, of course, about AT&T, <laughs> one of America's <laughs> least popular corporations, and also, as of this week, our parent company. So, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> and look... Exactly. It's an inadequate system that only functions if people constantly give up. It's built on the exact same model as AT&T's customer service hotline. <laughs> That's right, AT&T, new owners of HBO, long-time owners of an unforgivably dog-shit customer service hotline. <laughs> and, and look, if you are thinking... <laughs> ..right way for asylum seekers to come in was through a port of entry, like an official border crossing, they made it far more difficult to do that, with many being repeatedly denied entry into the country and forced to wait days or even weeks. And you can't just arbitrarily delay people that long. There are asylum seekers looking for safety, not AT&T customers trying to speak to a representative. <laughs> That's right! I've got your business, Daddy! I've got you so good! What are you gonna do about it? I'm right here! Now... Wow. And that is a real problem for consumers, because you have to use your phone. We can't go back to the days where everyone would just shout their message into a jar and then mail that jar across the country. <laughs> that was a terrible system, as it was only marginally more accurate than having AT&T now. Oh, you like that business, Daddy? Johnny's acting up again. Johnny's acting up. Oh, I bet I'm gonna get some spicy jars in the mail about that. And while some say that they are working on it, the fact is, if he had required them to do it from the get-go, we might actually have those fixes by now, because telecom companies aren't really going to listen to you unless you force them to. And AT&T isn't going to listen to you at all unless you call them on T-Mobile. How, how would they hear you otherwise? Their call would drop out, that's right, business daddy. <laughs> oh, that's right. You've inherited a problem, child. Let's dance. Let's dance, you and I. Nice work, Rod. The highest ever cell phone call. That's incredible. Or it would have been, but unfortunately, Rod had AT&T, so the phone call never went through. I got you! I got you, business daddy! I got you so good! You know, you know what? You know what? If I, if I could actually get serious for a moment, there is something I've been meaning to say. I, I know I give you a hard time, business daddy, but the truth is, you're the only business daddy I have. And I, I know that you just want what's best for me. I'm sure it's not easy having me as a business boy. And I probably don't say this as often as I should, but I love you, business daddy. And I hope that we never lose that special connection we have. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm so glad our connection isn't on your wireless network, because it's absolutely <laughs> terrible! I did it again! I did it! I got you, business daddy! Sorry, where, where was I? That's right. Um, <coughs> Mount Everest. Securus has ads which play like a shitty Apple commercial, but make it look like it's a warm, fuzzy company focused on human connections. And it's, and it's honestly nice that they are fully acknowledging how important it is for people to connect to others on the phone. It's frankly a lesson that AT&T would do well to take. <laughs> Boom! You suck it, business daddy! Business baby ain't never getting in line! This baby rides dirty! Wah, wah! I'm fuzzy! Wah, wah! Don't rub my tummy, I won't be settled! Wah! <laughs> <laughs> but what? Yeah, 
Of course it is. The only time it's understandable for a doctor not to hear a woman's complaints about pain is if she's calling into the office and she's got AT&T. Because the calls keep dropping out. Boom, business daddy! I've got you again! <laughs> business baby woke up all cranky. Wah, wah, wah. I'm airing my dirty diapers in public again. Wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. I'm high maintenance. Wah. <laughs> Dear friends, the letter said, I wanted to call you, but I have AT&T, so this seemed like a more reliable option. It's been an exhausting year, and next year is looking worse. I wish we could see each other. He, John. Reading the letter broke their otter hearts. It was so sad. He, John, had AT&T. The false belief that the virus was caused by 5G networks, something that led people to set fire to cell towers in the UK this month, which is just ridiculous, although not as ridiculous as the fact that those flaming towers almost certainly still offered better coverage than AT&T. Oh, that's right, business daddy. You thought a pandemic would bring us together? Of course not. Our feud must be an essential service because it's still in business. Seriously, though, BD, I do hope you're safe and healthy. I can't wait to talk to you as soon as this is over and as soon as I can get more than one bar of service. Wow, a death cruise ship. Look, cruise ships are already comfortably bad enough without bringing death into the equation. It's like if our parent company rebranded themselves as Genocide AT&T. Guys, guys, I don't know how you could possibly make a worse experience than the one that you're already providing people. That is actually a common trait of conspiracy theories, that they're inherently self-sealing, with any criticism just becoming evidence that the whole thing is bigger than anyone could have imagined. Although, I will simply say this, if I am in on this conspiracy, that means my puppet master is AT&T. And what makes you think that they can pull off a global conspiracy when they can barely pull off a complete phone call? How would they even be sending me orders? Sprint? Our main story tonight concerns unemployment, the thing that would absolutely happen to me if AT&T executives ever find out what I've been saying about them. But on the other hand, what are they going to do? Look it up online? How? With their internet plan? And then what? Call someone? Using AT&T? I think I'm fine. Wow. That was two thirds of the way to shockingly accurate. Ebooks? Check. GPS? Check. Beach facts? Not in this or any other lifetime. Although I will say, if there was one company that would go all in on a doomed technology like sand faxing, it would be AT&T. Absolutely right. Ticketmaster is one of the most hated companies on Earth, which is really impressive, because remember, this is a planet in which AT&T also exists. <laughs> hey, guys, we've still got a few weeks until the merger goes through, and I've got to say, it's going to be a bumpy ride until then. <laughs> and also after. And look, and if you are paid per mile and lose half your workday waiting, you are incentivized to try and make up for that time once you're on the road, which does make sense, doesn't it? If I only got paid per joke about AT&T, I'd try and cram in as many AT&T jokes as possible. I'd be dropping them like AT&T drops calls, because <laughs> the more Johnny burns, the more Johnny earns. <laughs> the US has actually taken strong action to break up harmful monopolies. In the early 20th century, we broke up Standard Oil. And as recently as 40 years ago, the government took action against who else but AT&T, our business daddy who <laughs> left for cigarettes and never came home. <laughs> they were actually the largest firm on the planet back then, and broadly well-respected and considered good, which is to say, completely unrecognizable from the AT&T of today. <laughs> but now, obviously, fuck AT&T now and forever. Oh, OK. So that doesn't really sound like net neutrality was jeopardizing investment at all. Although, to be fair, that was a phone call and it was Verizon, so it's entirely possible that every other word was dropped. <laughs> the, 